Welcome to another Coffee in English with the Alchemist. Today we are going to explore the fascinating world of productivity, time management and personal development. We have a very special guest joining us. Someone who is no stranger to the heart of mastering time and productivity. Also known as Captain Time, in the world of productivity, he is here to share with us his wealth of knowledge. Our guest today is Garland Coulson. Garland has dedicated his life to helping people reclaim their time and regain control over their life. With a career spanning over two decades, Garland has become a renowned authority in the field of time management, offering practical strategies that empower individuals and organizations to achieve more in less time. This episode has been recorded in 2020, so some reference to this mental community are outdated, but you will find the new links, connections on the show notes. This episode is brought to you by ThinkFitApp, the app I personally created to live more intentionally and combine productivity with wellness for a more balanced, meaningful life. But the coffee is ready. Let's go and have a chat with Gordon. So again, talking about your community, you just you created quite recently called Bizmentum. Why you created this community? What 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 is uh, what is your main goal and, and your purpose? So. Well, it has, it has multi purposes. One of them is I have a problem. Uh, I do time management coaching. And when I'm coaching my clients, usually at some point, I recommend to them they get a virtual assistant of some sort because of the fact that it just makes sense to have some of the detail work done by somebody else so you can focus on your high value things. The problem is then my clients would look at me with their puppy dog eyes and say, do you know a good virtual assistant? And I'd have to say, well, yeah, I do. I mean, it's the one I use. Here you go. And eventually what would happen is my virtual assistants would get buried and work for my clients. And I have to train more virtual assistants. So I thought, so I, I started by setting up, okay, I'm going to have to set up a virtual assistant training program. So I put an online course together and I found a platform for it. And I called it the virtual assistant mentorship program. So that was one part of it. For years, I've belonged to online, to sorry, to business networking groups like local chamber of commerces, uh, different groups. I was president of the Alberta Entrepreneurs Association. Um, I've, I've you know run several groups, been on the board of directors of several groups, and the problem I've always had is that their, their focus was always local, so they weren't. Uh, connecting me with a global audience, which is what my audience really is. So the local networking groups are great, but I would get a few small clients out of it. And to be honest, they weren't worth my spending hours every week. So I started to look for online business networking opportunities. Uh, and, you know, of course, I, like everybody, I arrived on LinkedIn and, and it worked for a while. I did get some good business, but of late on LinkedIn, unless you pay for Sales Navigator, you get nothing. Uh, and People on LinkedIn basically treat like a spammer if you reach out to them at all. There's no culture of, of referrals and things mm -hmm. like that. And a couple of times I had attended um, uh, meetings for Business Networking International, uh, which is an organization uh, that uh, holds local meetings. They have local chapters. And they take referrals very seriously. If you join them, it costs about seven or $800 a year to, to US to join, uh, plus your meeting fees. And you have to show up at every meeting with at least two referrals. Uh, you know, that, that's required, like you're required to Good show job. up with referrals. <laughs> They also are very restrictive. There can only be one realtor in a group, one web designer in a group, one graphic designer with the idea that you're not having to compete with each other. Now, with all these restrictions and everything else, they did $16 billion in business with each other last year. So they're incredibly successful. And one of my clients, and I'd heard of them for years, but I just, because my client tell wasn't local I'd, I'd never joined them and then one of my clients says oh garland you'll never guess what happened and he said i was in a business networking international meeting near you and i'm going what <laughs> he says yeah i dropped in via zoom because with covid they're all doing zoom meetings i go oh that's kind of interesting maybe i should look at it again and join it you know because mm -hmm. if i could connect with groups all over the world that would be awesome but when i contact 
contacted their local regional representative, they said, no, we're only doing Zoom meetings because people can't get together for COVID. Once that's done, we're going back. You have to join a local membership. I'm in a small city here just outside of Edmonton. My local city's got 37,000 people. It's not big enough for, for my clientele, you know, to have clientele. So I was back to square one. And so I figured there's got to be a better alternative. The other problem with uh, LinkedIn was in the beginning, their online groups used to be really useful. But what would happen over time is they just became full of what I call blog spam, people just coming in spamming with their links to their articles or their YouTube videos, and nobody's actually having a conversation anymore. So I decided to develop my own <laughs> system. So what I did was I, I came up with uh, Bizmantum and the, the idea behind Bizmantum is it's meant to be online business networking reimagined. I want to set up a culture of people who go first to Bizmantum to ask questions, look for suppliers, refer to each other, uh, help each other uh, and, and, con and continually do that. And I've, it's been quite successful. I've had lots of people sign up the first, first month and a half it's been running. Running, uh, but it's it's a long way to go, of course, because I'll need I, I will eventually want to have thousands of people in it uh, to be able to do that. But so far, I'm very pleased that the conversations are real. There's real people there helping each other and chi chi uh, chiming in to help if somebody's got a question. So, uh, so Biz Mentor, the name is just for, out of curiosity. Is it because business is, is the sound is business momentum business momentum <laughs> oh yeah okay it's short yeah. short for business momentum oh, trying okay. to come up with a name for anything now that is not already a dot-com name that's not already registered is very difficult so i was very pleased to find bizmentum.com was, <laughs> was available, available. That I could register that's it. cool cool and then, uh, then i joined also your your network because uh for my project one one project as i mentioned is think fit i i want also to create a um, a community of um but yeah, since I do realize it takes work, commitment, and uh, maybe some time. There are periods I am I'm, I'm available, but there are others that I'm not. Um, so I, my intention is is maybe to to drive uh, ThinkFit users and this community into Bizmentum because we are sharing the same concept, the same ideas. Although my my typical users are are more focusing on productivity, time management. Uh, I I know that in Bizmentum you 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 have also other type of coaches, life coaches, but everything everything is 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 good. I mean, for um, to, to share ideas, to share, uh, to have a network, yeah, basically. But my focus is to be cooperative. I mean, yes, there's multiple web designers, for example, in, in Bizmentum, but there's room for everybody because everybody's got a different angle. One person might do primarily WordPress. One person might focus on doing custom programming, custom apps. So everybody's different. And yes, so there's other life coaches on there, but I'm not worried because my main focus is time management and productivity. And in some cases, someone might be better off with the life coach for certain aspects of, of what I could help with as well. But if we all collaborate with each other, I mean, for example, I could put together a productivity summit with different life coaches and things like that. So there's ways of working together. So we stop look, thinking of it as competition and start saying, how could we how could we work together? That's the real power of a network. And what I've always loved about networks, and I've, I've used many of them for years, um, is the, the fact that people will answer. So if I go into a Reddit subgroup for maybe some software I use and ask a question about the software, the next day, I've got four or five people minimum who've answered. Plus, some people have even put together how-to videos for me. I mean, it's that level of help that, that networks can provide. And yes, I'm very open to people bringing their networks into Bizmentum because, of course, you could set up your own network as, as well um, using tools like I've used to create Bizmentum. But then there's my, my Bizmentum, there's your your community yeah. and there's somebody else's community yeah. if all those were together in one then we've you know we've tripled our our reach and uh, i know one of my uh, members uh, julie williams who's a voiceover trainer has mm -hmm. brought i think her, her all of her students into bizmentum which is great so so you know she's bringing uh, a lot of her people uh, there because I'm, I'm going why are all these these voiceover people joining bizmentum? a lot of voice so voice. it was it's been and great, yes. So, so we have no shortage. So, Bizmentum is the place to go if you need any voiceover work at all. Come to Bizmentum. I've I've got a whole crop of well-trained voiceover people for you there. That's thanks, to thanks know. to Julie, of course, who who has been great with inviting inviting people. And right. again, she's not focusing on competition because she wouldn't be bringing her competition there she teaches these people she trains them right on how to build their business and part of building a business is using online business networks like Bizmentum. 
great, great. And then I, 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 um, I also appreciate you. One of the first posts uh, you, you, you posted there is uh, how not to spam people. <laughs> yeah, because we, we, I think it was the first or the second post of, from your side. He said how to contact, approach people without spamming. This is a, this is a good skill that everyone should, should know. Yeah. Yeah, it's very common for you know people who don't really understand what they're doing to just hit every member and and contact them directly. And again, that that just comes across as spam if you don't haven't got taken the chance to get to know them to find out what's going on. Yeah. yeah. But definitely a, a video that's that's why I put it in the featured videos. I'm hoping people will watch that before they start connecting with people on Vismentum. So yeah, that's that's great. Um coming back to your uh, specific activity to your work. So you're a coach time management product coach um I, I have a just out of curiosity because i use in my in my app i selected six typical typical most common interruption types Check, checking with you if i have i have at least three out of six um here with me so what what in your experience the three most common interruptions uh interruption types well, I would have to say now, number one is this <laughs> smartphone. Yeah, <laughs> I have it <laughs> in different, in different, I have it in different way because this is no more at the telephone just for calls. This is right. everything. This is everything. So I have telephone calls. Yes, I have telephone calls, but not only. <laughs> Let's see. So telephone calls is one thing. What else in the second? The second on so, the uh, well, and a lot of them are related to yeah. to the smartphone. But um, so, for example, uh, no notifications. So social media notifications. So yes. you don't need to know that somebody liked your Facebook post or or somebody replied to your Twitter instantly. You don't need to break your deep focus, your concentration to know that now you can go back and check that. You know, check maybe check your Facebook notifications twice a day or something or once or once a day. And the same thing with email. Most of us have our email tab open or our email program open. And we are continually interrupted by our email. And most times that new email that came in was not more important than whatever task you were working on, but it broke your interruption. And the key thing about the interruptions, as, as you probably know, and you've probably mentioned in your app, is that every time you're interrupted, it takes Oh, 20, 30 minutes or even longer to get back to that level of deep focus you had before the interruption. So if you're interrupted multiple times an hour, you're operating at only a fraction of your of your brain power. And I like to use the example of, uh, you know, pick your favorite sports team. Uh, you know, your, your goaltender is not checking his text while he's waiting for the <laughs> <laughs> you know, waiting for action down in his end or in the symphony orchestra the violinist or the cellist is is not checking their email or something at the same time they're waiting for their turn i mean world uh, i like to say world class performance requires world class focus and so to get that kind of olympic level focus you cannot be interrupted period uh so you need to to create your work your habits your systems to give you that deep focus time so yeah those are two co-workers are another uh, major source yeah. of interruptions if you're working working remotely it helps a bit although working remotely you can end up with skype and slack um I, i'm not a fan of slack as you, you may, may guess slack and microsoft teams like all these things that oh wow instead of them just emailing me now i'm also getting slack so now i've got another <laughs> channel where people can interrupt me let's create more multiple channels where people can interrupt me so yeah uh, those are so there's some of the key ones um email uh the telephone of course uh the, the smartphone overall is probably the biggest one because it contains all these other ones uh and uh co-workers uh, can be another one even your boss can be continually interrupting you and breaking your focus and you might go well that's my boss well i have to but i have techniques for dealing with bosses who interrupt as well so yeah 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 and i, I in your expertise and you have also uh, yes your book is in the back i had not yet the chance of reading <laughs> stop wasting time your in your book you 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 cover also uh topics like like how, how to manage interruptions 
Yes, definitely yeah. how to manage interruptions, yeah. how to create focus. Yes, those are, are all in there. Uh, how to stop procrastinating, which is a big, a big part as well, because for many of us, procrastination is a exactly. is a real issue. And, and, uh, and sometimes, you know, it goes on for weeks or months and we get very stressed that we've never gotten to something. And, and then finally, when we do it, it didn't take that long. And then we're mad because why, why was I stressed for months when I could have blown through that task anytime with 15 minutes? And why didn't I just do it? <laughs> Great. So that, that's good. So I invite you also to read your, your book. Uh, so it's available. What is available? It's on Amazon as well, I think. Available so. on Amazon. So yeah. stop wasting time. It's available on Amazon, both print and ebook, ebook versions. Yeah, good. Okay. This, this is, but I, I went, when I entered this world of uh, procrastination, distraction, whatever, I, I, now I am uh, more on the psychological part because the behavioral part and what, what does it, Behind the procrastination, there is a lot. There, there's, there could be uh, something that uh, some need, unexpressed need, of, uh, that is is uh, is covered is covered by procrastination. Thing. And so there are multiple multiple elements impacting on the, the the procrastination. Uh, so yeah, is is a very very complex. <laughs> but yeah, and I go into a lot of the psychological aspects of it in, in the book as well, because yeah, it's quite intriguing to figure out what, why am I procrastinating? What, what, exactly. Why am I sabotaging myself? And there's a lot of self-sabotage that goes on. And so learning not to do that is, is key. So. Yeah, that, that, that's very, very good to know. And then I, I think I have almost everything. There is one that was surprising me when I, I was researching, which is, I call it a toilet emergency. <laughs> so I got, the, yeah, apparently one of the, in the, the, the first uh, top five or six interruption at, at work uh, is, is mentioned there, this toilet emergency. Anyway, we have also this one. Um, that, that's good. So, and uh, I assume that if you want to give three main tips to reduce interruption and to improve from end of today to who is listening to this, this audio, audio uh, podcast. So what are your first three uh, most impactful uh, um, solutions or just uh, tips? Well, first off, to reduce distractions, I highly recommend you work in time blocks of focus time where you're going to work on a certain project. So uh, one example is I, I'm self-employed, so I don't ever get a paycheck ever. So I have to market every week. So I, I have bl set blocks of marketing time that I keep sacred. I don't let anything interrupt them. Mm -hmm. During my marketing time, I'm not doing anything else. I'm not answering emails. I'm not doing all the other stuff. I have only work on those things. So I work in time blocks and I work very focused. The other one would be to take control of your smartphone and all your other notifications. So I only have open whatever I need to work in that project. So if right now I'm going to write an article, all I need open is whatever I'm, the writing tool is I'm using and perhaps one browser window, one tab for doing research, uh, you know, on the article. I don't need my email open. I don't need Skype open. I don't need any of these other programs open. And some of my clients often share their screens with me during my coaching, our coaching sessions together. And they'll have 20 or 30 tabs across the screen open, uh, including news and weather and different things going on. And so I, I teach people to reset between each project that you should close everything that you had open for the last project and just reset and start fresh and new. Uh, I'm a fan of the Pomodoro technique of using, I, I call it a focus timer because it was around before the Pomodoro technique, but essentially setting a timer for 20 or 30 minutes working and then taking a short break. And the benefit of that is it reminds you if you've got this smartphone counting down or, or a timer next to you, a kitchen timer counting down the 30 minutes, then you look at that and go, oh, right, I'm supposed to be working on that for this 30 minutes, not looking at funny cat videos on the internet <laughs> or whatever else you got drawn into with the ra endless rabbit hole that is the internet. So that's, that's the key things is to uh, have a set block of focus time for each of your projects, to set a focus timer for each one of those, to get rid of all the distractions. Uh, I sometimes call it a power hour to create one hour where you're uninterrupted, no phone calls, no nothing, and, and just work uninterrupted for one full hour. And you'd be, you'd be astonished at how much you get done when you can fully focus. The other trick, I guess I would say, is to plan first. So a lot of times what happens is the decision-making is what kills us in the productivity because we've got, we're 20 minutes into our productive 30 minutes and we still haven't decided what the task is we're supposed to do. So I've already pre-planned all my projects, 
um, what, what they're going to be, all my time blocks, and then what the tasks are in each one. So for marketing, I just open up my marketing task list, start with task number one, finish it, go to number two, three, so on. If it's content development, I go to my content development task list, open up the next content project I'm working on. It lists right in the task where I left off, where I finished, you know, last time. And I continue on with that till done. Then go to number two and number three. So I'm never having to decide what to do next. So if you're ever going, what do I work on next? You're doing it wrong. If you ever have that thing, then you need to incorporate planning time as, as you know, to get that out of the way. That, that's a good stuff. Then I, 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 I said for the users, you have a YouTube channel, you have you review uh, uh, also software and application. Then uh, everyone can go and see which which one is more uh, uh, suitable because each one is different. There are plenty of application, plenty of um, productivity and time management or um, project management tools, uh, but. I mean, each each one of us is different. So maybe someone is something which is more suitable for you is not suitable for me, for my needs, for my type of work. So uh, we need to customize and to understand uh, because it happened to me when I start trying different application. Uh, of course, starting from the most advertised one because there are these pop-ups and same things coming up. So, and it happened many times to me to, to try something that is, was very complex, too complex for my needs. So I was just spending my time learning how to, to, to use the, the, this, the software instead of using the software for my needs. So this was paradoxical. Anyway, um, um, okay. uh, another, uh, so I'm curious. Uh, yeah, how... yeah, there's no, no one tool to rule them all, yes. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And, yeah, can, and that's why you have to figure out which one's right for you. True. Uh, I'm curious about uh, your coaching. So what your typical approach, uh, before the, the doing this, because you mentioned planning, you set up a uh, time for planning uh, that is weekly, monthly, or, or whatever. You, you split uh, because there are many techniques, so many uh, productivity um, tools that are saying, okay, you see, you have your five years or three years plan that you go back to the week. Uh, so uh, what, what's your approach in terms of planning? Yeah, so there's no one approach. I usually recommend people start with maybe taking the last half hour of each day to plan or hour, or hour if you need it. And every one hour you spend planning usually saves you two or three hours. Like it's amazing how much it comes back to you. So don't think you don't have time to plan. You will. Or you could take the last two hours of the week and plan. Or you could take the last day of the month to plan for the next month. Or I like the idea of um, maybe end of December, beginning of January, planning for the next year. I also suggest people maybe consider a planning retreat where you take a couple of days and just go off to a cabin somewhere and <laughs> plan out what it is you'd like to accomplish for the next year. Because often you can get a whole new level of thinking if you go somewhere else. And if you have trouble planning in your normal workspace because you get too distracted by your work, maybe go to a nice coffee shop or a library somewhere and just you know sit there And because you're only focusing then on the planning. So that's the key thing. And, and you the planning needs to connect to what are the outcomes you'd like to achieve. Uh, and I, 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 they could be called goals, but I like the word outcomes because in industries I've been in the past, goals are almost used to punish staff members. It's like, oh, wow, you sold a million dollars this year. That's awesome. Your goal next year is three million. You go, what? Like no new marketing budget. No, I just have to triple. Like, <laughs> and after I worked like 40 hours a day to, to do this already, and you're going to triple it. <laughs> like, uh, so I like outcomes a little better than goals in some cases, but they're, they're kind of the same thing. But just in case for those people who've been traumatized like goals, like I have. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, what's the outcome you want to achieve? Uh, and then you you um, work out what's the plan to get there. So that's it. So the goal plus the plan is what you need for success and plus the focus time for the plan. So it's the goal or outcome plus the plan to get there plus the dedicated time to work on that plan. So those three things together are all needed to work. And most of us just, you know, New Year's resolutions. Oh, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to... <laughs> 
um, you know, I'm, I'm going to write a book this year, uh, you know, and, and, and they're very off the cuff, you know, pie in the sky things, but nobody says, how do you do that? And well, you have a, you have a fitness app. You understand that the way to lose weight is not to just set a goal in January and then continue doing the same thing you're always doing. You need new habits that are going to get you there. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a New Year's resolution that I, I don't recall. I think uh, before March, our, our all are gone and I don't know the numbers. Are gone, but yeah, yeah. Sure. So uh, going back to your, your activity, I'm curious to uh, how you approach a typical client. So you have a, a structure, um, typical approach. So I mean, you meet someone asking for your uh, your services and then what, what's your plan typical in general? Eh? So, so how do you tackle well, the issue? <laughs> I adapt my plan to every every client because every client is different. So first off, I have created a number of coaching templates, uh, things that I can go through with clients that cover every possible time management technique. And I started this because I had a client who was very successful and we, I'd coached him successfully for a long time. And it was getting to the point where I'm going, what do I have left to teach this guy? Because <laughs> you know, I taught him so many different techniques. And he, you, know, you know how sometimes you teach clients and then you have to keep reminding them, yeah, you're supposed to apply that technique. No, I, he applied the ball. He was using was, the ball. He was awesome. Best client ever, right? But I was starting to think, have, have I taught him everything I know? Are we done? Like, so I, I sat down one day and I did a massive brain dump onto the biggest spreadsheet I'd ever created of every time management technique I knew and just brain dumped it. So, and I now use that uh, when mm. I, with clients so that I can go through to cut. So I, I know where we've covered, I can know where we've left off. I've also created a very extensive goal setting t- template in a mind map as well. So I've got templates set up for, with clients that I can use and checklists and things like that. So I'm mm-hmm. developing those, but a lot of my clients um, don't, necessarily want to work step by step. I mean, I also give my clients who purchase enough hours, I also give them access to my 90 plus video library of training, you know, training materials as well. But for many of them, they just want to sh- brainstorm with me that week on on what their crisis is or what their problem is. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, Garland, here's the fires this week, you know, <laughs> let's go put them out. How, how do I deal with this problem? How do I deal with this problem? Three staff just quit. What do I do? I need people by Thursday, you know? And mm-hmm. so for some of them, it's, um, we, we go from one emergency to the next, and I'm trying to help them also plan for the future when we mm-hmm. hopefully won't have as many emergencies. Some of them, um, it's just whatever occurs to them that week that, oh, suddenly something came up. And as you start coaching, it unlocks a lot of things emotionally and psychologically, or it also unlocks ideas. They go, well, I could do this. And then they have say, well, Garland, I have this idea, but that would be a whole new business. How would I get time to do that? So then, mm-hmm. um, so some of our times are just, what do you want to talk about this week? And then we, we go from there. Yeah. But I've also got the, the structure, the backbone of where we can always come back to the, you know, to the program, uh, which is very step by step. My program is very step by step and starts off with things like like the planning, like the time blocking, like reducing distractions and gaining focus and how to you know, get your systems in place. So it, it's a very step by step program. But for many people, they just use me as a as a guy you know, in guide a mentor that week and to help yeah oh no no that's great it's good that this this approach that is personalized so yeah and then i also assume among the tools and the techniques you you mentioned you have this spreadsheet you have some something uh, more difficult or hard to to implement immediately so sort of a difficulty level because I, I assume that not all the techniques not all the tips uh, you, you you suggest or uh, are are the same are, are the, the same impact or level of uh, difficulty in implementing am, am i right yeah i i try to work with bu- the foundational building mm, blocks okay. first if i can so if i get the people used to I start off by trying to have them create their own personal productivity system. And that includes, uh, I I like to call it buckets, having buckets to hold everything. So if you want to organize your office, you got pens and stuff all over your desk, you need a place to put them, a drawer, uh, a 
pen, a pen holder on your desk, something, you need a place to put them buckets. So similarly, you need places to hold things like your tasks, um, your, your contacts, your people, uh, your notes. So I, I start by getting some of the basic systems in place. Then, of course, leading them into thinking in time blocks, gaining focus, reducing distractions. And so we build up from there into the more complex things like delegating and getting work done through others. And, you know, those are the more the more complex tasks. But in the beginning, focus, even even just focusing on reducing the distractions and creating a deeper focus has a huge impact. I mean, I've had clients tell me that I they've been able to double or triple their productivity using the techniques I've given them. And that's not from working more hours. And I also focus too on, I don't want my clients working 60 hours a week, then I teach them to triple their productivity and they're still working 60, but just getting more done. I, if the idea is, no, no, you're going to cut yeah. back to 30 after this because you don't need the 60 anymore and because you're getting three times as much done, right? So now you have more time to take a break or spend time with your spouse or family or in the community or whatever it is you want to do, you know? So that's, that's the goal is I don't want to just keep people working at that incredibly high level of uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. too much because you burn out too. Uh, after a while, it doesn't matter how good you are. Uh, you cannot work 60 hours a week forever. You, you burn out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking breaks, uh, re relaxing, restoring energy levels. This is the, this is a key factor. That's why I also wanted in ThinkFit to implement, to add exercise, physical movement and mindful exercise to recover, to recover uh, energy recover, just, just to do this break. And uh, you mentioned delegating, which is a fundamental is, uh, point. And uh, you mentioned before uh, your, your virtual assistance uh, sc school, uh, if I correct me if I'm wrong. At all. Um, because, yeah, one of the first steps when I start uh, looking into the biohacking community, of course, you meet different people. One is Tim Ferriss, author of the four hours work week, which, yeah. which, which was the first one of I know, my first of books uh, on delegating and virtual assistants and uh, assistant. Uh, so can you please more uh, dive deep more into the delegating phase and what is your, your, uh, um, so your work with uh, virtual assistants and uh, what do you suggest for uh, the users? So first off, um, when I first talk about delegating, a lot of people say, well, Garland, I don't have anybody to delegate to. So unless you're already a manager or you've already hired people, you may not have anybody to delegate to. But it helps even in the beginning if you start tagging tasks that you think could be done by somebody else. So the goal is there's tasks that have to be done by you, okay, as the founder of a company or in your position. For example, for me, strategic partnerships, like if you and I were to discuss strategic partnerships, I need to do that. I can't have a my junior staff member do that or, or something with you because those partnerships, we need to see if they're right. I need to do them at my level. Major level marketing needs to be done by me, but a lot of simple follow-up. I, I could have a virtual assistant doing something like reaching out to some of my contacts. And so Garland wanted me to contact you and invite you to Bizmentum. You know, that would be a, an example of something that could be done by a virtual assistant. So with many people, when they start, they often hire somebody uh, because that's what they're used to. The problem with hiring a staff member is that you then have to pay them every day, even if you don't have enough work for them. Uh, you have to have benefits uh, and all these kinds of things. You have to have office space for them. So there's a lot of drawbacks to hiring somebody. And if they don't work out, you've got that stress of having to call them in your office and fire them, which is uh, stressful for the uh, stressful for being fired, but it's also stressful for us having to fire the person. So I love to outsource instead of hiring wherever possible. So at one point I owned, I had my own web design firm. I had five web designers working for me and I don't do web design. I suck at graphic design. You would not want me doing your <laughs> graphics ever, but I was the marketing guy and I had web designers that made stuff look amazing. Right. So me, me plus a web designer makes a better website than either a web designer or a marketer can do alone. But I didn't always have enough work to keep five web designers busy. So what I did was I had outsourced to them and then uh, I could use up to five if I had lots of clients, but if it was quiet, I could just, you know, give one or two clients. So by outsourcing that, instead of hiring them, I would send them work as needed. I knew their work was good because I'd used them in the past. They were happy to get the work from me, but I didn't have to keep paying them for hours I didn't have for them when things were slow and I didn't have clients. So a virtual assistant uh, for people who may not be quite that familiar with what it is, think of it as a 
office assistant and or a personal assistant. So think of it as your go-to person in your office you might hire, general office staff. Think, think of it as that. And within that, there's tons of specializations, but you know, overall, think of it as a general office person. So that person could do data entry. They can help set up some of your marketing campaigns. They could be your voice on social media if you wanted. Uh, they can do internet research for you. Uh, they could set your travel itinerary if you're going to be traveling for business. Uh, they can do personal shopping for you if you want. If you uh, don't know what to get your spouse for their upcoming birthday or anniversary and you think somebody else might, might make better choices than you because <laughs> sure. your wife didn't like the vacuum cleaner you got her last year. <laughs> so That's my case. But... Maybe time to outsource to a personal shopping assistant, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's tons of work that they can do. Some of them can do some basic copywriting or write articles for you. Uh, just think of anything that way. So I have a habit of going through in my task list and I add tags that will say VA, like for virtual assistant. And then later on, uh, I, I do a search for all the tasks that are tagged that and then find a virtual assistant to, to give them to. The other trick I have, with, and I have a video on how to hire a virtual assistant as well, which you can mm -hmm. find on my YouTube channel. But the other trick is I will hire multiple virtual assistants for similar tasks test them quickly and I have them work only one or two hours and I do pay them for the one or two hours but then I check their output so if this is a project that would normally take 30 hours I say okay I want you to get me a list of all the people in this target audience in the UK you know for example if I wanted to uh, let's say I had something of interest to industrial buildings so I want you to find all the manufacturing companies in, in the United Kingdom so I can say spend two hours on it and then show me your spreadsheet well, and then I might have somebody else do the same thing in Germany, someone else in Italy. Like I might just do this and have different people. And then I look at all the output. Well, one or two of the virtual assistants will probably come back clearly superior in the output they've given me and the amount. So then I just send those one or two people more work and I don't just don't send the other ones any work. And there's no stress. I don't have to fire them. I just say, thank you. Uh, you know, cause I've, I'd only contracted them for a couple of hours and I just don't send them any more hours. So much less stress than having to fire people. Uh, testing is critical. I will tell you, I fire 90% of the people I hire uh, through this kind of a system, through this testing. So uh, it's really hard to find good people. So you need to be really on top of it and you need to be following up. One of my clients had a case of where she had a, a couple of freelancers who just burned through the budget, like, you know, added a builder for a whole bunch of extra hours, doing things she didn't want done. And because she wasn't on top of it quick enough because she got really busy. So it's really key when you're delegating. You've got to be on top of these people. You've got to be following up with them. And again, test after a few hours before you turn somebody loose on it. And it may not be their fault. It might be a misunderstanding. OK, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're hiring somebody with another language, um, you know, so and, and, and I'm not picking on anybody who speaks multiple languages because I speak only one. So somebody if I hire somebody from another country and and their English is not as good as mine, but, you know, they also speak Italian or German or Dutch or whatever it is. Great. That, that's awesome. So I, I want to make sure the instructions are clear. So I'll send in the instructions, have them work for one or two hours. And then if they got a bit off track, say, oh, no, I didn't quite mean uh, I met more manufacturing firms, not not um, not really, uh, say, shipbuilding firms or, you know, like something like that. And also it's a test for you, too, because your instructions are usually not that clear the first time you do them. So I'm, I get better and better in, at giving instructions uh, when I do this. So. That, that, that's a good point. I was just writing some notes uh, because in my personal experience, um, and this is maybe one tip for who is listening, uh, when there are some tasks, repetitive tasks, I mean, mainly low level, let's say low, medium level, that if we want to also say low level tasks that, okay, we can delegate. Uh, I suggest um, in the planning phase or to, have, to reserve a slot to break down and create distractions because this is what I, I, I was facing the first time. In my mind, everything was clear. <laughs> <laughs> everything what to do was perfectly crystal clear but translating what this in, in, in to somebody else in, in some other place maybe speaking i think i was a filipino but, but speaking other languages uh, translating to actionable from the other side is very hard so there is a lot of margin for misunderstanding of uh, so and there are also there, are, there is a, a difference in culture from, from country yes. by country this episode is brought by ThinkFit, available at thinkfit.app. 
app. It's the app I personally created to live more intentionally, combine productivity with wellness for a more balanced and meaningful life. Using TeamFit, you will get more meaningful things done. You will reduce interruptions. You will know how to manage interruptions. You will physically move more with a piece of mindfulness as well for more energy recover and synergy between physical movement and flow state. And we have a deal available on the ThinkFit store. The more you use ThinkFit, the more you get fit and get things done, but you have fit points in reward. The deal is exchange fit points for one hour of consultation with Garland Coulson. Yes, you hear it right. Go today to thinkfit.app and try. You will be surprised. Yeah, this is really true. There are also personal uh, skills, but yeah, translating one uh, one task in breaking down into simple instructions that are and people can understand and having maybe a feedback from the other side. Did you so can you please repeat back to me? That, so yeah, this is a good point. And um, yeah, the other also, trick, yeah, the other trick with that is I am a firm believer. I, I love checklists. I'm the checklist yeah. king. So to me, checklists are the first and most basic form of process documentation. So whenever I do anything, I don't start by just diving in and doing the task. I start by creating a checklist template for it. Then I can copy that checklist every time I use it. So I'll give you an example. When I'm going to create a new YouTube video, there's a lot of different steps. I have to come up with the idea. I have to do keyword research to find out what people are searching for. I have to come up with a good title for it that's going to work from a search engine optimization perspective. Then I have to write the outline. Then I have to uh, create the PowerPoint. If it's a PowerPoint or a mind map, I have to record. Like There's all these steps. So right now I'm up over 30 different steps for creating a video. Now that sounds like a lot, but I get them done within an hour or two. So it's not that it's that many, but these are the steps. By creating this and having it as a template, if I go to hand that over to a virtual assistant, it's now much easier because I've got a checklist. And if they screw up on the checklist, I know the checklist isn't clear. So I, I change the checklist every time I use it, I make it clearer and clearer. So now over a period of months, my checklists are getting really good. Um, and so that's a key thing is by, yeah. by thinking in terms of breaking it down to a checklist as if somebody else had to do everything. And if you do that for every task in your company, all of a sudden it's much easier when you start hiring people or start outsourcing, it's much easier to do it. The other trick I have with delegating is I do a lot of video delegating. So what I do is if it's anything to do with any software, anything to do with the website or anything that's computer-based, which more of, more of our work is computer-based now, I, I screen capture and do a voiceover. And then what I do is I just send them the link to the video. I, so for example, try to explain, okay, go to this page on a website, go <laughs> six paragraphs down over in the left hand, right hand side, the alignment is off. Like try explaining that and, or even doing screenshot pictures takes yeah. time. Doing that in a video takes 30 seconds. So to show them the problem. So it's much faster to show the problem than it is to try to type it out. Um, you know, even if you're a fast typist, it's much quicker to just talk, talk and do it. So I find that, uh, yeah, video delegation, I'm doing that almost daily. Like I'm, I'm delegating by video and I put the link to the video instructions right in the task when I assign it to, to my virtual that, assistant. Yeah, this is, I'm, used to, I'm also a fan of this with, uh, there are a lot of, uh, Chrome extensions, maybe that you can just click, just uh, record, and and send in. I uh, just no editing skills, just simple, easy. And then I love the checklist one. Yet I'm also a fan of those. Uh, starting from my luggage, so for a short trip, 
on the yes. trip. I have a checklist of what is I need for a long trip, a short list. And every time uh, the, uh, this should be the case, every time I miss something for some specific reason, I, I update the list. But after many years, I think they are almost almost fine uh, as they are. But yes, checklists are used for, for this. And I also use, for instance, for my podcast, I have this, uh, I use mind map, but also checklist uh, in the form of checklist with uh, the steps I have to, because most of the time I also forget which kind of software I need to use. I had noise reduction using this software I purchased on yeah a few years ago and so i put a link you use this to do this so yeah this is a common very very interesting use i also am a fan of checklists and i i discovered recently just i was looking i discovered a, a, a tool on windows you, you use windows on, on Mac? windows windows yeah i i i i just i don't recall how i found it what's called step recorder have you ever used this I haven't used that one, no. It's, it's a standard. Uh, this is a, something I ate, or, or, or all the phones, uh, also Windows. If you look on your Windows, you, you have it because it's a standard thing. And uh, at least as far as you know, it's, it's very strange. I use once. Uh, if you look on a uh, step recorder, so you, you yep. record what you do in, in your, your Windows, in your yep. and it, it automatically creates the step by step of a, open the tab click here automatically <coughs> and you can add also comment it's a sort of um, tutorial or yeah i invite you just just to check it um, yeah, i'll have a look at it. yeah the one i use a lot is called loom uh, oh, no loom. no no yes yes this is yeah loom, which is a chrome video. extension what i like about it too is i mean there's other programs out there i use open broadcasting studio a lot to do video recording mm -hmm. uh, which is great but use loom uh, has the benefit that it automatically creates an online link uh, so I yes, can easily just yes. then drop that link into the task or drop it into the email to send to the person I'm assigning it to. Uh, so it's very easy to create a video library of all these processes. So yeah, that's my focus is to really be creating yeah. those that video yeah. library uh, so that I can easily delegate. Yeah, yeah, but I, I let's 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 do one one test. No, because this is different. This is yeah, I, I, I did open it up. I did have a look at it. So I'll certainly spend more time on it afterwards. Step recorder is, is not recording the, the video. It's recording yeah. what you do in a sort of screenshot. So when you start recording and you move the, your mouse, you click, you open, you scroll, you open a software, it will create a document with all the screenshot, all the instructions. It's, it's incredible that, that no one is actually promoting this because it's already in there and it may be very very good for for um, some tutorials or some instructions so i accidentally i i, I typed the step recorder and this is a default uh, program uh, on windows and, and i can't believe no one's mentioning it because it seems like it would be really useful like i just did, did open it here and had a look at it but yeah. nobody's using it so i have to do a review on it later i'll have to spend yeah yeah it's very perfect and, and yes i'll definitely check it out so, it's just so. a start recording you move your mouse you do whatever you do yeah. and then you when you stop you you will see the result yeah. i invite you to check it out did you like this episode if so simply subscribe thumbs up and click on the notification bell not to lose any opportunity in the future. And remember, sharing is caring even for the coffee. Even better. The next time, see you soon.